Hey guys, Ographics in here. Welcome back to another video. In today's episode, we're going to create this amazing isometric section in Photoshop. Check it out. Alright, so from SketchUp I exported SPNG files, two things, an image only with colors and another one only with the lines. This will allow us to have more freedom here in Photoshop. And another thing that we can do is divide the colors into separate layers so we can apply effects and change colors individually. Using the magic one and with the contiguous, contiguous, I don't know how you say that, but with this option disabled, left click on the colors and hit Ctrl X to cut and Ctrl Shift V to paste in the same place, but in a new layer. Do that for every color and don't forget to rename them and color code if possible. Now as you can see it is much easier to simply go to the layers, hit Ctrl U to open up the hue and saturation adjustments tab and slide the hue, saturation or lightness till you get the exact color. You know these types of illustration tends to result in a better composition if we work with a color palette, complementary colors or monotone. There are many different types to get the colors on point. I'm going to leave on the video description the hex codes from the ones I used on this video, if you want to do the same way. Now it is time for the patterns, which is the main part of this illustration. You're going to see that it's pretty easy to add them, but the effect is amazing. You can easily find them online for free. Alright, so to add them to your own collection, do the following. With the pattern opened, go to Edit, Define Pattern. Give it a name and hit OK. Simple as that. Now from the ones I found online, I added one with black and a white background and one inverted. So we have more options to choose from when applying to our colors. Now back to our file to apply the patterns. Right click on the layer and go to blending options and activate the pattern overlay. The key here is to change the blending mode to either mode to apply if you want to hide all the whites or screen if you want to do the opposite. You get the hang of it with time, knowing which one is which. Alright, now it's just a matter of applying this to all colors. Just make sure to follow some kind of guide, for example the short lines to represent the sand, dots to our main color and so on and so forth. So I found this incredible reference image online with this kind of illustration and got really interested in trying to replicate some of the artist style. I'm going to leave a link to the original drawing on Behance if you want to check it out. His image is much more detailed and has some next level moves. Here on this video I'm trying to simplify it and turn it into a video lessons for you. So you might learn the basics to do something awesome with more time. I believe the artist did the drawing on Illustrator, I'm not sure, but yeah, I think Illustrator has a better potential over Photoshop, especially with the use of patterns. But for a quick sketch, Photoshop is faster and you don't have to pay too much attention to lines connecting to each other, or even the file getting too heavy. So I think you choose whichever software you prefer, the one that you're most comfortable with. Another thing worth mentioning is that the project is from an architecture office called Saboya Ruiz. I joined them for a contest last year. The design of this school is amazing and if you'd like to know more about it, the website is going to be on the video description as well. And also if you'd like to follow along the tutorial and make your own version of it, I'm going to leave the base files as well as the pattern images on our Gumroad page. There you can support the channel by getting the behind the scenes files. This encourages us to keep posting these free YouTube videos. As always, the video is slightly on fast forward, but if you would like to watch it in normal speed or even slower than that, you can use YouTube's built in feature to slow it down.
So these playful people were found on Google Images. Search for free vector people and you should find plenty of results. We can merge them all together, remove the background and scale to the correct size as one image. So because doing like this, we now have all the figures in the same size. And then simply with the rectangular marquee tool, we just need to move them to the correct location. These figures compose well with the image because they have a similar color palette. Well, I would say that the colors are not the same, but they go about the same tone, something towards the pastel colors. So heads up on that when doing images like this. The trees were done using one file from the scale figures pack. I just changed a little bit with the patterns and fills, placed in a new file and created a brush out of this image. To create a brush, go to edit and then the find brush preset. Then on the brush window I tweaked every single setting I could to randomize the tree. Then it was time to add the texts. They were added in isometric view as well to match the illustration mood. 
If you'd like to know more about it, I'm going to link an old video that talks all about how to insert text and objects in Isometric, both in Illustrator and Photoshop. To finish off, we can place a paper texture on top and set it to mode to apply. This gives some extra texture to the composition. We can also duplicate the texts, merge them and turn into black, then place it below to create this 3D shadow. Oh, and I'm also going to rotate this pattern to match the current position of the section, so we get vertical lines. You could do this with the vertical pattern of course, but since I forgot it, I'm just gonna rotate it and then we can achieve the same look. Alright, that's it! An incredible result with little effort. As you can see, I completely forgot to show you how I added the roof, I just realized when I was recording this last voiceover part, so sorry for that guys, but it was the easiest part I swear it. It was just exported from SketchUp and placed above everything with a low opacity. So the key of this image is to have good color palettes and great patterns. Since we've separated the colors into individual layers, we can adjust the hues, so I brought the sign closer to a blue and saturated a little bit of the yellow as well. My goal here was to show you a straight to the point process, but the more time you spend here, the better the results will be. This type of illustration is that kind that each corner of the image has something happening. You can tell multiple stories throughout the canvas. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the video, leave a like to support the channel, subscribe if you haven't already, I post videos weekly all about architecture visualization, diagrams and so many other topics related to architecture representation. Follow us on Instagram at old.graphics to get all the first updates. That's it for me, see you on the next video, bye!